Hey, this is Tracy with the Tracy's Keeping It Real Show. Today's guests are part of a network of the Minnesota Home Ownership Center, a U.S. housing and urban development intermediator, providing home buyer education counseling services via a network of home ownership advisors embedded in community based organizations across the state. Welcome to another episode of Tracy's Keeping It Real. Today we're tackling an issue that's close to home, literally. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions many of us will make ever in our lives. And for first-time homebuyers, the process can be daunting. That's why we're talking every day and trying to make the first-time homebuyer's experience wonderful for them as they move into owning a home, particularly people of color. We're here today with us, Teresa Ruiz, Home Ownership Services Program Manager of Powderhorn Resident Group, and Melissa Pugh, Financial Coaching at Project for Pride and Living. They're both heavily involved in teaching the homeowner's stretch course at their organizations, a key part of the First Generation Home Buyer Community Down Payment Assistance Program. Thank you both for joining us today. I just want to jump right in with the program requirement setups, and we want to talk to you, Teresa. Let's let's talk about what the first time home buyer community down payment assistance program requirements are for the participants to take home ownership education courses, like the Home Stretch. Can you talk about the role for PRG? And again, that 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 PRG means Powderhorn Resident Group and why this program is such an important requirement for our first-time home buyers. Yes, um, at PRG, Powderhorn Residence Group, um, we do offer the first-time home buyer course, the home stretch class, which is a requirement. Um, why it is required is um, some type of first-time home buyer mortgages require completion of a home buyer education course as a part of a mortgage approval process. Um, If a mortgage company is giving you money, they want to make sure you're educated and aware of what they're lending you. Um, So we do offer the class to make sure that all of our participants are knowledgeable. Um, We also offer home buyer advising, which also is a requirement um, with one-on-one financial wellness coaching um, that we do as well from HUD certified counselors. And so uh, do you feel like most of the first-time home buyers, as they come in, ready to work with you because they see they're working with a person of color and they're excited about, oh, good, I'm walking in and I, I can relate to this sister here. Yep. You think there's a, there's that comfort level there with you being there? Yes, definitely. A lot of um, our participants, they are um, clients of color and a lot of our presenters and volunteers are in the community, um, local realtors, loan officers who work with clients every day who get down payment assistance. Um, they give them relatable scenarios um, that they can relate to. Most people, they don't have any knowledge when they come to class, but when they leave, they're asking if they could take it again. Oh, wow. (laughs) Wonderful. That's how comfortable you are able to make them when they're going through the class. Yeah. Wow, that is great. So, Melissa, can you talk about the financial coaching experience and your role as a homeownership manager at Project for Pride and Living? And why do you think it's necessary for first-time homebuyers, especially people of color, to go through a course like this, what's the key benefit? Well, the the key benefit of going through a course like that is to have the home buyer, the potential home buyer, sit down, go through their budget, look at what they're actually spending, and then incorporating what they will be spending once they purchase a home. It gives them a realistic expectation of how the budget is going to change from renting versus owning. I think that everybody should go through that because it does allow people to make some changes before they actually get into home ownership. And it's important that people understand that difference because I I think I think one of the 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 understanding that some people have because I've heard people say yes it's it's cheaper to buy in some cases than rent for the amount of rent that renters are paying now. But it's also understanding what does that mean? Because yeah, so your rent might be $1,700 a month, your mortgage might be $1,200 a month, but if they understand all the other elements that may come with that home ownership, then they might 
find that it, it, they are saving money, but they're spending more money in another, uh, another area mm -hmm. that they may not have spent the money in. So I think it's important. And do you find a lot of people that go, oh, I never even thought about that, or they start finding surprises that are good surprises they're learning right now? Absolutely. I, I found that a lot of people, when you're sitting down going through the amount of money they should have in their savings before they start the process, they have a, co a conflict with some of the lenders that have told them, oh, you only need a $1,000 to buy a house. Well, that's not entirely true when it when you look at things that they need to purchase during the home ownership process. And so I would bring up things like, well, when you move into the house, you're going to need something on your windows if people decide to take their curtains. And so those are the things that they've never thought of. They're like, oh, I'm in the house and now everybody can see me. Yes, you have to go get some either paper blinds or curtains or whatever, and you should budget that into your your buying process as well. And that's smart because not being a homeowner, I mean, when you move into an apartment, there's already window covering. Right. But when you move into a home, all that's on you. Yes. And so it's important that we're educated on that because otherwise we move in and we're like, okay, where are the curtains, you know? Exactly. Oh, yeah, we're not prepared. It's right. very uncomfortable. So it's, it's good to, I love the fact that there is this whole process that people can be educated ahead of time because just sitting down in front of a lender, that's the pieces that you don't hear about. Mm -hmm. So, so Teresa, tell me, let's talk about the access. Um, where people and, and these, where can these people find these courses? And are they option for people who prefer virtual learning? or that they need to have a class setting, and, and, and are there different languages? Yep. Um, there is, you can go on the Minnesota Home Ownership Center's website um, and search your location, um, language preference. If you prefer virtual or in-person, um, those options are available. Um, so the home ownership website um, is accessible to people to find um, specific needs that there are needed for them to participate in the home stretch course. Um, there are virtual options, different languages, language preferences, and also um, in the Twin Cities and surrounding areas, they're able to search from their location too. Wow, so they don't even have to come in. I mean, but is there a disadvantage in that? Because it feels like, I know people like staying home, mm -hmm. but then if they is would like every question be answered or is there a virtual person that they can actually talk to online or is it just they're going to hear the the pre-recorded messaging and then if they got questions then what do they do if that's the way it is which, at prg you? we do offer um virtual and in person in our virtual classes um people have to have their cameras on and they do have the option where they can ask questions in the chat and we have an assistant who reads them through the chat so that we make sure the people who are at home because we know everybody can't be there in person or their schedule might not be able to make them be able to be there in person so that their questions um, are able to get answered. Nice, nice. So they do have that option because that's the, you know, it's one thing if you just have a, rec a, a tape yep. recorded message and you just listen to that, but then it's like, but that didn't answer my question. I have more questions. So it's great that there's a option because we need everyone to know mm -hmm. that these services are really intended to help educate them at every level. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing so far is fantastic. It's just, I like for our, our community to have an opportunity to, to be able to, first of all, do it at home. If, you know, if we don't have, if transportation is an issue mm -hmm. or timing is an issue, is there a time frame? That's, I guess, a question. Can they get on the service at any time? Can they come on at midnight if they work evenings? Or is there a time frame? Um, our classes are offered from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And it is a requirement, even if you are online in person, mm -hmm. um, to check in in the chat from our breaks and lunches and make sure that you're still participating. And then also, um, if you are in person, we offer lunch because um, we know it's a long eight-hour day. Um, so that is the requirement for the course. Um, our classes aren't pre-recorded. They are live virtual session. Okay. Oh, yeah. so that, that's why it's important that mm -hmm. they're during that time frame that they are dialed in. Yep. So, Melissa, money is always a factor, as you well know, as we all well know. And um, what's the cost for taking a home stretch course? 
and for the families already saving for a down payment is their financial assistance to help them cover that? Well, the course, the workshop costs $40 mm-hmm. per person. Okay. However, we have been able to secure sponsors to cover that for most of our classes. And one of our sponsors is uh, NARAB, which is National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Mm -hmm. And they cover the course for participants that come into our Project for Pride and Living workshops. And that's per person as in, is that everybody in the family that's going to be under that uh, assistance or is that just who's applying? It's it's for uh, anyone that is seeking that workshop certificate. So... If a family member wanted to come and join but not seek the workshop certificate, they could do that for free. Okay. If they're seeking that workshop certificate, then they would have to apply online for the class, and then they would have that workshop fee paid for by another organization. Nice. So you're able to bring a friend in, another family member that Mm kind of can help you because my grandmother used to always tell me four four ears is better than two. So anytime you go to a conference, if you can take somebody else with, they might hear something different than what you heard. So this gives an opportunity for people to feel comfortable to bring another member in to ask questions, and that other person doesn't have to pay if they're not looking for the certificate. So Correct. That's great. Correct. Everyone currently is covered, so they could bring in their entire family and sit down and and attend the workshop for our program. Perfect, perfect. And that's also, yours is online as well as? No. Oh, this is all in person? Ours is only in person. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. We feel we feel it's better as far as interaction with the people that are coming and presenting, having that interaction and that one-on-one time during the breaks. Really, you know, people really appreciate that. Right, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. And, then, and they, too, both programs, they have to go through the process in order to get the down systems assistance, right? Yeah. They can't get it without going through the entire process. Correct. So there's no skipping any of the information that we need because we got to have that information, which it's all in the vein of helping us become more educated home buyers mm-hmm. and making the right decisions that are going to help us. And so you guys are there for the home buyer. You're not there for the l- l- the mortgage lender to make sure that mortgage goes through. You're there to make sure that the individual home buyer first time particularly has a good experience with buying that first home. Mm -hmm. Because one thing we don't want is for them to move in and have to move out because Mm -hmm. they didn't get the right information. Absolutely. And so um, that's a good process that you got going here. So, Teresa, all, okay, so all right, let's get to the the meat meat of it. What's actually taught in these courses so that, people understand when they come what they're really going to learn. I know we talked a little bit about some of the things, but can you walk us through the main topics covered on the homeowner stretch course? The main topics that we cover are like the budgeting um, and credit, the loan mortgage process, how to choose a realtor, um, the different steps in the inspection, um, the closing process, what all is needed to bring to closing, what a closing disclosure looks like, um, so that people can see um, what they need to look for. Um, what else is covered in there? It's a lot of good information. Okay. <laughs> so so even with the home paperwork that, that you're going to show them what they need to look for, mm-hmm. is it to the point of, do you go, because there's a lot of paperwork mm-hmm. when you get ready to go to closing. Yeah. It's endless amount of paperwork. Yeah. You don't go through all of them sheets. Do you? No. Okay. Um, a lot of key information um, that people do need to look out for and then also information um, that their realtor or loan officer might not be sharing with them. There have people that have came to the class and learned so much information in the class and then Monday morning I might get a call like, what did you guys teach my client in the class? They want a new realtor. And I'm well, like, you well, <laughs> teaching them what we taught in the class. Well, so they're actually educating themselves to where they're educating their realtor or their loan officer on the information that they've learned. So is it then that they come to you before? I mean, how how does that, how does the process go that when I'm looking for a home? Mm-hmm. Where do I start and how do I end up with you? Do I start with a realtor first or how do I end up with you guys? I personally say in the class first, um, but everyone has their different um, steps of when they're in the class because a lot of realtors do refer their clients to the class. Okay, so they've already 
been in touch with the realtor mm -hmm. before they even came to you yeah. to know that maybe they didn't want that realtor or that they needed to ask better or what questions. What questions to ask, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. sometimes I think our, our the realtors are so used to just selling homes mm -hmm. um, that they're not always thinking about the important questions, and especially if you're... Depends on the realtor. I'm sure sure that some of them are used to selling a little more high end homes, and first time home buyers are not always trying to get into them homes, so mm -hmm. not right away. So, so all that. So the credit that's that's another great piece that you mm -hmm. teach because credit is a big problem for people. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to that credit part, how does how do you decide how to direct them from? Is it part of the network you use that you kind of recommend they go with? Or do you have a credit restoration program that you recommend them to go to if that's what they need? Kind of how do you walk them through that process? Um, we kind of show the difference with like Experian and TransUnion um, versus like looking at Credit Karma and what you see on there and how to get a good credit profile or picture. Um, would be to use the Experian or TransUnion and then also letting the people, well, the participants in our class know that if they work with the home ownership advisor, that they get a free um, credit report pool for them and it doesn't affect them negatively because we are nonprofits. Okay. All yeah. right. And so do you walk them through the whole process? Say they, they've gone through the class mm -hmm. and do you stay with them? Even maybe they say, can you come with me and look at some homes? Have you ever had anybody want to really take you through their whole journey? <laughs> I haven't yet, but um, at PRG, we work with people for however long they need it. If it takes them three years to find a house because they feel like they're not ready yet or they haven't found the, the house they want, mm -hmm. um, we work with them for however long they need it. And for whatever they're looking at needing your help and assistance mm -hmm. to do. Great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So for for what you're, what you're talking about, you know, there's a workshop that's eight hours and that just gives you an overview. Mm -hmm. But if a person wanted more individualized help with credit, mm -hmm. then that's when they would do it with the one-on-one -on -one counseling session where we would pull the credit. We would go through their credit report. We would tell them what ways um, they can, what techniques they can use in order to increase their score, mm -hmm. either quickly or if they're just working through um, getting collections or um, payments off of the credit report, that would be a little longer process. Oh, okay. So if, if, if I were in the market of looking for a home and I'm a first time home buyer and I'm trying to decide, do I need to go get a realtor first or, or come to you first or where do I go first? If I don't have somebody directing me, um, how would one even think to reach out to you? Well, that's our biggest problem. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. our biggest problem is is we're trying to reach the potential home buyer mm -hmm. before they get to a realtor or a mortgage lender because a lot of times the mortgage lenders out there have specialized programs that they use for their their bank, but they don't have a full array of down payment assistance programs available that that particular buyer could benefit from. Mm -hmm. And so if they get stuck with the wrong lender, mm -hmm. it could drastically affect their ability to close on a loan or even the amount of down payment assistance they could get. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the Home Ownership Center and we're trying to develop ways that we can be consumer facing and talk to the consumer first to come to us before they go to a lender or a realtor. Yeah, that's that's important because mm -hmm. if you can actually direct them in better areas than what their other network might have afforded them, mm -hmm. um, then coming to you seems like a better route because there's no, there's no commission. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit in you working with them other than the fact that you are trying to get them into a home at a best rate that you can and and also giving them an assistance is huge. So um, I'm going to have to try to help figure out a way to help get them people directed to you first mm -hmm. um, versus going straight to a realtor. I mean, if they go to a realtor, that's fine. We talk about that in the workshop because a lot of times when people go to a realtor, mm -hmm. they don't know the rules. So they may not jive with the realtor. They may not 
have a, a good connection and they're afraid they can't leave them. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking to them in class, that's some of the questions that come up. Am I committed to staying with this realtor? They haven't called me. They haven't kept in contact. So we give them permission and the information needed in order for them to move past that realtor and get a better fit. For for one that so so the answer to their question would be because I've heard people say that you gotta stay it's like this loyalty thing that you gotta stay with the realtor that you have. But in reality, you just said you don't have to. No, you don't have to that but they have to read their contract so we can help them with that okay. to see what that contract states. And a lot of times, a lot of times, not a hundred percent of the time, if they just you know, write the broker and say that they no longer want them to represent them is usually not a problem. Right. Yeah. They're not trying to hang on to them. Correct. And probably can move on to another mm -hmm. client easily enough without fighting that one. Exactly. And, and, and gaining a bad reputation behind it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Melissa, who typically shows up for these classes? Are there people that are already deep into the, which we look, just talked a little bit about the buying process? Or, or are they just getting started and how do you tailor the course for the different knowledge levels? So some of us know every darn thing, let it be told, and others know nothing. So how do we kind of, you know, is it like, how do we bring them in at the right level? Well, usually everyone benefits from the class, whether they're starting out or whether they've been into, into the process before, because there's certain things that they didn't know about back when they had initially started the process. So an example would be first time home buyers. The definition for first time home buyer is someone that hasn't lived or owned a property in the past three years. Okay. A lot of times people don't realize that they are actually qualified as a first time home buyer. So they come in the class, they learn that information, they realize now they're open to the first time home buyer down payment assistance. So they get to learn, you know, different parts of the process that may not have been available when they initially started years ago. Okay. So so what you just said, just so I can make sure that our listeners and our viewers are actually heard what you just said, they could have lived in a home and could they have purchased it at one time, then no longer live there and no longer own it. Three years later, they're ready to get into another home, and now they're considered a first-time home buyer. That's correct. No matter how long they lived in the home three years prior to that time frame. No. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So I would have never See? dreamed of that person being a first-time home buyer. Exactly. Yeah. So that's great. So that, that kind of gives you a fresh start and gives you an opportunity to start all over again. Yeah. Great program. So, so then... Uh, Tressa, tell me, last year alone, there was over 2,700 people that took one of these courses across Minnesota. That's a pretty significant number. Can you talk about the reach and impact of this program? I think this year I'll probably surpass that number. Um, but yeah, that is a really um, good reach for the program. Um, the significance of it is more educated home buyers who then talk to their family members and then are also teaching their households. Okay. So then when they teach their households, we see their kids in the class. Oh, um, so great. 18 or 19. Yeah. So it's impactful in that way. Nice. It just doesn't start with the one participant in the class. Mm -hmm. They bring their cousins, aunts, friends, and then their kids, and then they're educating their homes. So let's talk a little bit about that cousin, aunt's friend mm -hmm. demo. We know that African Americans, unfortunately, are low in home ownership. Mm -hmm. Does that demo look like African Americans, or is that people of color in general that you're talking about? I would say um, African Americans. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The reach that African Americans has increased. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. So we got more, more wealth building community mm -hmm. now which more is more educated right more educated that generates that wealth building because one of the things i don't think people connect a lot of times the wealth building is that you're putting you're buying a home you're not putting all your mm -hmm. all the equity into somebody else's property that that's you're a renter of yeah because now all of a sudden the landlord is who's actually getting the equity into the building mm -hmm. that you're 
putting week over week, I mean month over month, year over year payments into, and at the end of the day, you are not building any wealth. Mm -hmm. So we need to start to look at things differently as a community and start to realize that we need to be wealth builders mm -hmm. and we need to leave homes that are that we have equity in for our young folks that are coming along so that they now have property and they have financial wealth into that home that has the um, equity put into it. So the connection, do you talk about that a lot in the home buyers, first time home buyers? Do you kind of help uh, mm -hmm. them understand the long vision mm -hmm. of home ownership as well? Yeah, absolutely. I always tell people, if you're not paying your mortgage, you're paying someone else's. Mm -hmm. So if you're not gonna take the time to become a homeowner, or you're worried about, you know, I got to fix my own plumbing or I have to, you know, cut my own grass. That may be true, but your rent that you're paying incorporates all those expenses. And I don't think a lot of people look at it that way because they just see I'm paying this one amount. Mm -hmm. And so the landlord will take care of everything. You're paying this one amount because the landlord has has increased the price mm -hmm. to include all of these things. Oh yeah. So you're you could it. be yeah, you're mm -hmm. paying it one way or another. So I always tell people, hey, get home ownership, build that equity, mm -hmm. give it to the generations, build that generational wealth because by not having access to that generational wealth, they're missing out on um, and I say this at every workshop we have one of the greatest abilities to to actually gain wealth in this country is through home ownership. Yeah, real estate. It's through real estate. So I always say to people, if I gave you $1,000 and every year you paid me 6000 mm -hmm. or 9000 every single year, would you invest that $1,000? Most people will say yes. That's the appreciation people are missing out on by not owning a home. They're missing out on um, the appreciation of the entire asset. The entire, like if you have a house that's $200,000 or $300,000, you're getting benefits of that entire asset without paying for that entire asset. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're looking at the stock market, you have to have $200,000, $300,000 sitting there in order to gain that appreciation from those stocks. So people don't understand leveraging. And by leveraging with a little bit of money, you're going to build wealth over and over and over again. Absolutely. And that's that's what this is all about. I mean, we all need a place to live. Yes. Right. So that that's no secret. We all we all got to have a roof over our head and, and, and we hope that it's a nice roof. But it kind of makes a difference on what we choose to do if we want to continue to make the roof over our head somebody else's roof mm -hmm. or if we want to make the roof over our head our own roof. And so that's what we're talking about today, uh, viewers and listeners, is just we're talking about owning your own and having your own and not building somebody else's wealth. And we, as a community, want to build our own wealth. So, so Melissa, um, um, besides the course, what other resources are out there? You know, I've heard of homebuyer advisors, um, can be a big help, but how does that work? And is it really free? It's absolutely free. Uh, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, advising is absolutely free. The only thing you have to pay for is paperwork. Like if we ask you to fill out a form, that is it. There's nothing else. We sit there, we schedule the time with you. We go through your your budget with you. We think about ways that you can reduce your cell phone bill, your insurance bill, which has been crazily expensive recently. Mm -hmm. um, and we think of ways that you can improve your credit. We sit here and we talk through the process about buying a home, what to look for with a realtor, with a mortgage loan officer, all the down payment programs. We go through a wealth of in-depth knowledge over and over and over again. And the only thing we ask you to do is paperwork right, right that's it yeah mm -hmm. well and 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 is there a lot of and i i re recall the years when i used to it's been a minute since i had to buy a home lately i've, I've been in mine for a minute but 
Is it still all that paperwork that they still have to fill out? <sighs> yeah. It's yeah, we have a lot. That hasn't been. So that's something somebody has to, you really have to prepare yourself. Yes. But outside of that, once you get through that, mm -hmm. it, there's nothing better than walking into your own spot with a key that belongs to you. Yes. And then to take care of your own property is really Absolutely. exciting. And there's so much more to that, taking care of your property. And, and I think we're going to be talking about more of that as we continue these conversations about first time home buyer, because we know that getting into a home and then maintaining the, the cost of it. And back to you mentioned people complaining about the fact that they have to cut their own grass and, and you know, you, you have to buy a lawn more. So, the, but at the end of the day, it's still, it's investment. And, and I think what we need to realize is when we're spending money and we're investing in our own future mm -hmm. and we're investing in the future of our family, there's no better place to put our money into the investment, you know, and other communities understand it. Mm -hmm. So it's important that the communities of color really understand what the significance is in being a homeowner. So the big question is now or later with interest rates, where they are, should folks be jumping into housing market right now or should it be smarter to wait? And either of you can answer that question. They should jump in right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, no better time. Yesterday was better, but today's <laughs> the next best. The next best time. What we always say is, you marry the house, you date the rate. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, oh that <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah, because yeah. you can always refinance down the road. But yeah. you, what you're doing when you sit back on the sideline, because we have people that have been sitting there ten years, mm -hmm. fifteen years, twenty years renting on the sideline, afraid to jump in for home ownership. So what I always do, I do this calculation. Say, so how much was your rent? And then I sit there and I calculate that over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So this is how much you paid your landlord. You just pay for his house. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody else is just plus money. Absolutely. Because you solely paid for it. You pay for yeah. his house, yeah. yes. It's amazing. And as a as an investor, as a landlord myself, mm -hmm. I always say, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Right. Now, uh, Melissa, some of the home ownership programs do allow you to be a landlord in where you can buy property. Is that a part of either of your programs that people can, if they're looking to invest in property, or is this all for just single unit homes? Ours is... Um... Our property that they can purchase, they can buy a duplex, single family, a, a fourplex. Oh. They can buy up to four units. Some down payment programs will allow you to use their funds for it, but it's very specific. So I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly right now. I'd have to look up, you know, what programs allow you to use four unit, you know, down payment for four units or what programs for duplexes, but there are people that are able to do it. There used to be a program, I'm not sure if it's still out there, that did allow you to purchase a second unit, even though you already bought one, mm -hmm. and there's down payment for that. Oh. But I'd have to double check, Okay, because so I there, think it went away. Oh, okay, because there's, there's such a thing as that homestead where you have to live in, but you'd have to live in one of the units yeah, at that point. Yeah, exactly. And you could still rent the other three units out, as long as you are one of the dweller uh, in that unit. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's another great way to is to build some wealth, is, especially if you got kids. Exactly. <laughs> and you want to put them in another one of them units versus them going out and spending money, and then they can learn to pay you rent. And mm -hmm. then we that's another teaching process. So that's exciting. I didn't know that about the program. I yeah. thought it had to have been a single unit home that they were purchasing. So that's good to know. Well, this, these are so many reasons why people need to know that you guys exist and that you're there to help them. Mm -hmm. um, I guess lastly, you know, before we wrap it up, let's make sure that the listeners know the key steps. So, Melissa, what's the checklist for the successful application? I know there's something about completing a course with 12 months, but what else? Right. So in order to get the most down payment assistance that you, that's available, we always su suggest that you complete the home stretch workshop within 12 months. You get a underwritten file from your lender and you don't shop until you have those two things. A lot of times we see people coming into the program and they already have a property 
And so what that did was it eliminated certain down payment programs because they didn't follow the steps in order to qualify for other down payment programs. No, oh, so they kind of messed herself out of some money that they, they could. did. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's that. That's not good if no. you have an opportunity to put some of that money into mm -hmm. doing something different with the home that you're purchasing. And like likewise for you, is that the same process for your program as well that mm -hmm. they're going to go through? Yep. Um, they do need was an underwritten pre-approval first um, before they can access the down payment, different down payment assistance programs. Okay. And what's the most? Is there a different amount of money in your programs that one gets to have, you get more assistance from your program than from your program, or are they both the same? There's a lot. Right There's now. a lot yeah. of different. Oh, so for PRG and PPL, um, we we access down payment programs through the state, county, and local. Okay. So we all have access to different programs. I know PRG has specific because they also sell houses, so there might be something extra for them. We don't have any houses currently that we're selling, so we don't have assistance with that. But, yeah, we all access the same mm -hmm programs out there okay so so sometimes you do have houses that you have on the listing sometimes yes oh but yeah. that probably goes real fast huh? yeah yeah it does and how's the housing looking out there right now for most of the candidates that come through your program Are the, is it easy for them to find homes right now or is housing as tight as it once was it's still tight it's still tight but it's not as tight so uh in this early in the year like in the spring, early summer, it was still crazy. Mm -hmm. It was multiple, multiple, multiple offers, 10, 15, 20 offers. Now we're down to maybe three or four multiple offers. So it's getting better. It's slowing down a little bit, but it's still difficult unless because the sellers in their mind think they can get, you know, a million dollars for this property. And you're like, nope, nope. You can't get a million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, know, you got to lower that a little bit. So it's taking a little bit to adjust from both sides, the seller side and the buyer side. And so so with the program of the down payment assistance, is there a cap on how much a seller can ask over the asking price if he feels or she feels that they're in a bidding war? Okay. So it gets a little tricky. So when you're doing a bidding war, what usually happens is the seller wants a appraisal gap, mm -hmm. which unless the buyer has deep pockets and access to money, they can't cover. Mm -hmm. So they won't be able to compete when it goes into those kind of multiple offers because they don't have the ability to do an appraisal gap. And an appraisal gap means that if the house that they're buying is listed for 250 but because it was a bidding war, it went up to 275 and then the appraiser appraiser came in at 250, that would the gap would be $25,000. So they would have to pay that on top of down payment of what whatever percent the lender tells them, 3%, 3.5%, 5%, whatever it is. So that's really difficult for most buyers. Yeah, it is. Very. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a strain. Yes. So at the end of the day, it's better to start early, yes. mm -hmm. come to you early, have a road map planned out for yourself early. Don't be eager to get into anything that, that just because you're wanting to get into a home, plan it out. What do you tell your, your, your people? What do you say? How long do you tell them to kind of have patience for? A year, two years? I usually tell them about a year. Um, we... One of the first things I always ask them when they come in is, when's your lease up? Because that usually motivates when they are trying to get into a new home. And so if they're telling me, oh, my lease is up in three months, I want to buy a house. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, because it's going to be a minimum of 45 days once you actually have a house before you close. Mm -hmm. But then you have to get up to finding the house, getting prepared for a mortgage, that's going to take a little time. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend that people, if they're pretty close, like their credit's ready, they 
their income is ready, they've been in their job at least two years, if they're ready to get into home ownership, I usually tell them it's going to take a minimum of three to six months, depending on where they want to live. Because now we're dealing with people that won't live in certain neighborhoods, but they'll rent there Mm -hmm. for 15, 20 years. But they won't buy there. But they won't buy there. And that might be the only place they can afford, but, you know, that hasn't set in their their realization yet. So we have to work through that as well. Right, right. I understand. Well, so we know just basically everybody just know we're talking a minimum of six months. Yeah. You know, at least maybe a year, but that's okay. It gives you time to plan. It gives you time to be rejected because home buying with or without an assistance program Mm -hmm. is not easy when it comes to looking for that house. I actually literally looked at 60 houses before I found the house I'm in right now, 60. Mm -hmm. And most of them were not necessarily what I was looking for, but the ones I were, there was already people walking around in that house with me while we were both looking at that house. So it was depending on who determined if they wanted that house Mm -hmm. and were prepared when you walked out to make a bid. So that's how crazy the houses were Mm -hmm. when I bought mine nine years ago. Um, but still, and yet, it takes time. So everybody, prepare to take time. Take your time. Look for it slow. Don't be eager. You're going to find the house of your dreams. I did. You will. I'm sure these ladies have. And it's just getting in there and, and learning what you need to learn. That's what they're here to do is to help you get through that. So thank you so much uh breaking all this down and helping our readers and our our, our, our not read it because I do print as well, but our viewers and our listeners Mm -hmm. that these are the things that they really need to consider when they're trying to look at being a first time and or I like that part about not necessarily first time, but you've had three years since you owned a property before. So now you can jump back into that experience. So take your time, be ready and make wise decisions. So next time on uh, Tracy's Keeping It Real, we're going to explore a, a look at home buyer advising. And guests will be Henry Rucker with the PPL and Lachelle Smith with PRG. So we got people coming from your same organizations. It should be noted that while not requirements as part of the community DPA, which is the Down Payment Assistance Fund application, home buyer advisor is tremendously valuable for free service what it is, how does it work, what does it do for you, and that all happens next on Tracy's Keeping It Real. This evening's programming has been brought to you in part by the Minnesota Home Ownership Center, a U.S. housing and urban development uh, in intermediate providing home buyer education counseling excuse me, services via a network of home ownership advisors embodied in the community-based organizations across the state. So thank you so much, Minnesota Home Ownership Center, for providing this today. Until next time, Tracy's keeping it real. Have a good day. Today's guests are part of a network of the Minnesota Home Ownership Center, a U.S. housing and urban development intermediator, providing home buyer education counseling services via a network of home ownership advisors embedded in community-based organizations across the state.